Hi everyone, welcome back. And today we are going to talk about learning or determining the lesson of a fable. Now, in an earlier segment, we talked about what fables were. I wonder if you can remember what fables were. I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, so I'm thinking in my mind that fables often have two to three characters and their characters are typically animals or even plants who have human-like qualities. So they may talk, they may sing, they may dance, they, they do things that humans would do. Another thing about fables is that fables always have some kind of lesson or a moral that they want you to take away or learn from. And then the last thing that all fables have is that fables are typically short. They're not really long. So today, we are going to talk about determining the lesson of a fable. The first fable that I'm gonna to read to you is called The Shepherd Boy and the Wolf. Every day, a poor shepherd sent his son to take their few sheep out to the pasture. We can't afford to lose even one, he would tell the boy, so keep a close eye on them. And if you see a wolf, shout as loudly as you can, and the whole village will come to drive the wolf away. Day after day, the shepherd boy sat alone in the meadow. I wish a wolf would come, he said to himself one day. At least then, something would happen. Then, the boy had an idea. Jumping to his feet, he cried, Wolf! Wolf! as loudly as he could. Sure enough, the shepherd and the farmer, the milkmaid and the baker, all came running. But when they reached the meadow, all they found was the shepherd's boy laughing at their trouble. There's no wolf here, he shouted. We've, we've got better things to do than run all this way for nothing, muttered the angry townsfolk to one another. That night, the shepherd's boy promised his father he would never play such a trick again. But a few days later, he was watching the sheep. The boy became restless again. What do you think that the boy's gonna do this time? Do you think that he might try to sh shout wolf again and see what the people end up doing? Thinking of how amusing his last trick had been, he drew in his breath and shouted, wolf, wolf. Again, the villagers came running. But when they saw no wolf, they again grew angry. There's a wolf, I swear, the shepherd boy insisted. He ran away when he heard you coming. But no one believed him, and they went home grumbling. The very next day, the shepherd's boy took the sheep to the meadow again. But just as the sheep started to graze, he saw a dark shape with glowing eyes lurking in the shadow of the trees. Wolf! He shouted as loudly as he could. The animal growled and crept closer. Wolf! Wolf! cried the frightened boy. But no one came. And the wolf leaped on one of the sheep, dragging it away into the forest. Let's talk about the moral or the lesson of this story. We know that the boy cried wolf several times and that in a way he was like pranking or tricking the people of the town. So I would say that the moral or the lesson in this story is that no one believes a liar, that it's really important to always tell the truth. It's not okay to continue to prank people when you know that they're coming and constantly coming to help and rescue you. And so when they tried to rescue him or rescue the sheep, I mean, no one believed him. So that was the moral of this story. No one believes a liar. He didn't get help the third time. The first and second times he did, but on that last time, not at all. Join me as we read another fable. This one is a classic. Most people know about it. It's called The Tortoise and the Hare. A conceited hare boasted about her speed to everyone who would listen. Not even the north wind is as fast as I am, she declared. No animal in the forest could beat me in a race. Now, a tortoise nearby grew tired of such bragging. We've all heard you talk, but we've never seen you run, she said. Why don't you race with me? And then we'll see who's the fastest. The hare burst out laughing. <laughs> I could beat you standing still, she exclaimed. But she agreed that they would race to an oak tree around a bend in the road. In an instant, they were off. The hare soon out of sight. The tortoise plodding step 
by patient step. So in other words, the hare was gone really quickly in the race, but the tortoise is moving really, really slow right now. I've practically won already, thought the hare as she dashed around the bend in the road. I could stretch out here and take a little rest and still beat the tortoise by a mile. And she settled down by the side of the road. She planned to jump up and finish the race the minute she saw the tortoise. But the grass was so soft and the sun was so warm that before the hare realized it, she had fallen asleep. I think right now the hare is really, really confident that she's going to win the race. She's even taking a nap. Oh my goodness, who does things like that in the middle of a race? But we know that the tortoise is still behind. I wonder, will the tortoise catch up to the hare? Meanwhile, the tortoise continued on. Slowly, she came around the bend in the road and passed the sleeping hare. She was only a few feet from the oak tree when the hare woke up from her nap. So now the tortoise is caught up with the hare. Seeing the tortoise so close to the finish, the hare leaped up and tore along the road as if the hounds were after her. But she was too late. Before she could reach the oak tree, the tortoise had already been declared the winner by the crowd of cheering bystanders. So let's think about what the moral or the lesson is in this story. We know that the hare was pretty confident at the beginning of the story. She knew that, or she thought at least, that she was gonna win the race. And eventually the she decides to take a nap and the tortoise catches up with her. So I would say that the lesson in this, in this fable is that slow and steady wins the race. You don't have to be super quick. Just be slow and steady and you'll get there. It's not about how fast you are. What an excellent, excellent fable. And we'll do one more fable. This is another classic that's one of my favorites. It's called The Fox and the Stork. And as we read today, I want you to think about the lesson in this fable. And I also want you to think about what the fox looks like and what a stork looks like. Remember, a fox would tend to have very sharp teeth. A stork tends to have a long beak. Think about that as we read. A fox was jealous of his neighbor, the stork, for her elegance and grace. He longed to find a way to make her look foolish, and at last he had an idea. My dear friend, he said, hiding his cunning with gracious manners, would you be so kind to join me for dinner? Why, I'd love to, replied the stork. But when the stork arrived to the fox's house, all he served her was a thin broth in a shallow bowl. Broth is kind of like a soup, and a shallow bowl means that the bowl isn't too deep. The hungry stork could only wet the tip of her long bill, while the fox lapped his dinner eagerly. But the stork didn't complain, for she was hatching a plan of her own. What a delicious dinner, she said politely. You must dine with me tomorrow, good neighbor. When the fox arrived at the stork's house the next day, he smelled a delicious fish soup. He licked his lips eagerly. But when he got to the table, the soup was served in a tall glass jar with a narrow neck. With her long bill, the stork drank her soup easily, but the fox could only lick a few drops from around the neck of the jar. What is this? He growled. I can't eat this, and you know it. My dear friend, replied the stork calmly, I'm sure you will enjoy this dinner just as much as I enjoyed the one you served to me. Well, what do you think that the lesson of this fable is? Now we know that the stork went over to the fox's house and the fox served the stork dinner in a shallow bowl. So the stork can only like wet its bill. And then we know that the fox ended up joining the stork for dinner one night and that the fox couldn't get his mouth around the bottle of the, around the neck of the bottle. So I would say that the lesson in this fable is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. They both realized that they didn't like to be treated a certain way. So the lesson essentially is to make sure that you're doing the best that you possibly can by other people. I thank you so much for joining me today and I hope that you'll join me again next week. Bye.